Hey, what's up, everybody? We have a new YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe right now. Leave a comment on the video. Share it with your friends. It's also a podcast. Three and out. Wherever you listen with me, John Middlecoff, Apple, Spotify, we have you covered. As well as thevolume.com. We have merch. Check out. I got three and out hats right now. Thevolume.com. Search the podcast. Buy some merch. Okay, a little Friday mailbag which is going to be Fugazi Friday heavy. I uh, told everybody, fire in those DMs. If you got a good Fugazi Friday, just write that in the DM, and it's easy for me to search it, and we'll find it. So we'll start with Bradley. The Shohei Otani news has to be Fugazi Friday material. The ESPN article is very interesting. Well, it's pretty clear. Something doesn't pass the smell test. Now, under no circumstances, unless the guy bet on his team or baseball, should anything happen to Otani. But you would have to be naive to think that his interpreter, let's even guess he's making three, four hundred K a year, is the guy placing enormous bets. Not saying that he's not also gambling, but this does have Otani dabbling around, written all over it, which I'm all for. Who cares? I just hope. You know, something crazy doesn't happen and we lose this guy. As someone who still, I'll watch the good baseball teams and I definitely will watch the Dodgers. I want to watch Otani. So I hope the Hollywood elites have enough power to make this go away. But the bookie was arrested, four and a half million. The story changed. Something doesn't add up. As someone who's been caught in a few lies in his day, uh, this, this, it was impossible to not red flag this immediately. Their story changed. Uh, man. God, I, I love a good guy gets arrested. The right-hand man for a real famous or powerful person gets in trouble. Story changes. He claims to just steal money. Fuck. <laughs> steal money, my ass. Otani was funding that operation. I have two ideas for Fugazi Friday. I recently did some upgrades to my house, the in-ground pool and landscaping. The first Fugazi is the insane complications and costs to trying to get permits from my town, county, and state. The se- Well, come on. Anytime, I didn't know until Twitter was invented that people rooted for the government, quite like the legacy media, right? Most people, anyone in business who's ever had to deal with them in any level, state, local, federal, like the incompetence there. I've said forever, there's two people that can be incompetent and keep getting elevated. That's government officials and referees. At least being a referee is relatively difficult. I mean, the the racket and the scam, the fugazi that that goes on in the government is an all-timer. But listen, I, I think it's, We were supposed to, uh, I I had a condo in the Bay and I did big remodels here, deal with the HOA. I I never do it. I just kind of, I'm I'm a big believer in, uh, don't really ask for permission, ask for forgiveness later with a smile on your face. Because I think anytime you're dealing with the permits, now obviously some jobs, you don't have a choice. People won't, you know, I I have friends in the construction industry. You can't even break ground until you get the permits. So I obviously I'm not saying everything is, uh, has the ability to do it that way. But anytime you're waiting for permits, unless you can fucking grease the skids, baby, you could be waiting a while. The second is even more annoying. Trying to find a responsive and professional serial service provider, landscaper, mason, contractor is impossible. It makes me think they don't even want my business. How does someone in the customer service industry survive when they can't even return a phone call? I think one thing you're underestimating, and I had one of my brother's good friends is like a general contractor. And he's like, uh, they're like 30, 31 years old. Maybe they're 32 or 33 now. Maybe my brother just turned 33. So they're in their early 30s. And he said, you know the best part over the last seven, eight years? My competition are all these older guys that are getting ready to retire. People my age, where where he lives, he's like, everyone wants a white collar job. No one wants to do this. He's like, I've never been more busy. My phone rings off the hook. I'm not saying this is the case. But there is a chance that these people are swamped with work. 
I remember when the guy finished doing my uh, my remodel. He's like, we got about 10 more projects lined up. It's insane. So I, I just think that I think a lot of these people are packed. Wanted to share another tipping culture story I had this past weekend. I went to Jersey Mike's, and after I got a sub, I like Jersey Mike's. They flipped the screen where the tip started at 20%. Not to mention, there was three different people who make my sub. Who does the money even go to? Who does he? If you run a business, any business, deli, uh, you name it, car dealership, grocery store, selling sandals, whatever, and you make 20% on every transaction, like that is your profit margin, you're going to be really rich. You're going to make a ton of money. The notion that 20% has now become the norm, like that's, you should have to kind of work for that, right? I mean, I don't think it's that crazy. A lot of people are sending me uh, the the tipping Fugazi, how they've upped. I remember it used to start at like, I don't even think it used to start at 15% that long ago. It used to start pretty low, 10, 15, 20. Now, I, I don't think we're that far away from it just starting to like 35%. I went to a restaurant and the worker said I had to place the order through the kiosk, which I don't have a problem with. But as I was paying... The kiosk asked for a dip. <laughs> oh, man. I, I just think everyone is uh, is wiring these companies this way. The thrill and excitement of March Mania is here. And DraftKings Sportsbook, one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps, is giving new customers a shot to turn 5 bucks into $150 instantly in bonus bets with any college basketball bet. North Carolina listeners, don't forget DraftKings Sportsbook is now live in your state. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code JOHN, J-O-H-N. New customers can bet five bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code JOHN. The crown is yours. I think I got a Fugazi here. Most of the traditional mail is junk that nobody wants and goes straight to the trash. Yet, we all act like this is just a normal part of life. Why does it have to be? It's a waste of resources. In 2024, we pay the bills online, we shop online, email. Why do we need this anymore? As an added slap in the face, taxpayers are the ones paying for it all as the Postal Service loses billions of dollars each year. Partly. I mean, that's a reflection, again, back to the government officials being incompetent. If we ever lost billions of dollars a year, we'd be out of business. But obviously, this is a something we need to operate. But how, how much longer? Let's think about it. How much longer is the Postal Service, as currently constructed, going to keep operating the way they do? Right. Obviously, if I, if I send something to my mom, in California, let's just say I, I send her my Zins. She wants some Zins. And I, I because they don't sell flavored Zins, she doesn't want, want Zins. But let's just hypothetically say this. I'd have to package it and send it. But in terms of the mail, because it originally started right, mail is a line of communication. We don't communicate that way anymore. Hell, whenever I see older people love talking on the phone, my generation and younger, like the, unless it's very, very serious, we can text, we can email. Phone call is not necessary. Now, if it's very serious, phone call or per in-person meet, 100%. But the amount of phone calls the older generation still takes is pretty wild. I don't like talking on the phone. Why? I don't think it's necessary unless it's important or family and friends. But in terms of business, like we don't need to do it. And I, I don't really do it. But I, I see some people, I'm like, what a waste of time. So I, I think getting back to the mail, like, even think about this. The, uh, the Christmas card, right? Everyone likes taking a cute picture with their, with their wife, their girlfriend, with their family, with their kids. It's cool. How much longer does that have? 
I'm not saying it'll go away, but it does feel like, are we 10 years away from our refrigerator being essentially like an iPad and I just email and I can post it all and it's all that way? How much longer is the hard copy Christmas card? Because I'll promise you this, I would short the shit out of that if it was a stock. I'm not saying it's going to happen next year, but that the, the Christmas card, the way currently constructed, no chance that has a 20 more year shelf life. Zero. I, I, no chance. None. Just ordered an item on Shopify. I used to own that stock and it didn't really do much and I, I kind of got out of it. But I'm a believer in the company because clearly that's where, where everything's going. Internet sales. They had a spot for a tip for people who pack and ship the order. It's crazy, man. It, it, it really is. I mean, aren't hey, Shopify, aren't you paying the guy to do that service? What, what if I, what if I, every time I did a podcast and, and I posted on, uh, you know, on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, I had a link to my Venmo. Anyone who liked what they heard could send a tip. Talk about Fugazi Friday. I went to the dog groomer and used the self-service washing station. My girlfriend and I washed the dogs ourselves and paid 20 bucks for that, which is ridiculous on its own. And then the guy spins the iPad around and asks me for a tip. The dude sat behind the desk the whole time while we washed the dog. You know what's funny is uh, Maria's dog, who's now I consider my dog as well, Lolly. She is a pug Shih Tzu mix. Pugs obviously don't really shed. Shih Tzus do. She sheds a lot. So we take her to the groomer. She gets really fluffy and hairy. So she goes to the groomer, I'd say once a month, sometimes a little longer, once every six weeks. Take her to this place, kind of by where we live now, called Fur Babies. I like fur babies. And forever, you take her. She's a 25-pound dog. Costs like 50 bucks. Well, we took her a couple weeks ago. Marie went to pick her up. And they're like, actually, we realized we were mischarging you. We were charging her as a pug, not a shih tzu. I'm like, well, yeah, she's fucking both. So before the, the shih tzu, or excuse me, the pug was $50. Shih tzus, because they have more hair, are $95. I wasn't there, but I, I've been thinking about this. Okay, I can see somewhat of the logic. Certain dogs cost more than others based on their hair. But she's half and half, right? So it's like, could we meet in the middle? How about we give you $70? You've been mischarging us forever? Bullshit. guess she was very rude as well. So, Lolly, we're in the process of looking for a new groomer. Little Fugazi. I'd like to hear your take on the amount of time people spend on their phone, all ages at the gym. It's crazy. You're usually there for about an hour and people are on their phone half the time. I saw a kid today scrolling TikTok in the middle of doing sit-ups, not even texting someone, just scrolling his phone. Do you notice this at the gym? Other public places at all. People are too dependent on technology. Here's what I think it is. And I'd be lying. I can be guilty of this. I, I can. Right? It's the dopamine hits. Apple's getting sued right now. All these social media platforms are going to be, they're eventually going to go through it. They have us addicted to the hit. I used to be able to be, be bored and just kind of sit around and do nothing. It's impossible for me. Honestly, I find it hard to read because my mind wanders and wants that hit. It is not something I'm proud of. But I, I think most of these people, ideally no human, it's one thing to be a kid, you don't even know what you don't know. But how often, like you said, do you see like 40, 50, 60 year olds just on their phone, sitting on the bench, right? Or sitting by the squat racks. I think it's an addiction. And I think they got us by the balls. Now I'm torn, right? I My career has benefited from technology. I'm not anti-technology, but I also battle it a lot mentally. I, I do think if at the gym and, and there are people waiting, I, I find myself sometimes no one's waiting. I'll look down. Again, it might even just be checking like who's 
and the guys I'm betting on for golf, what are they doing? Right. Or scroll stocks. It's not always like TikTok, but then sometimes you look up and the dude's waiting and you feel like shit. Now you could argue some of the youth, do they even care? They might not, but I, I, I don't think you're alone to notice that. I think a lot of us are guilty. It's not proud, but it's addicted culture to that little phone. And I, I think way more people are than not. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, happy Fugazi Friday.